Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus and thank you for this morning. Praise you, Father God, that already you've ministered to us, in us, even by song. Father, you have prophetically spoken to us and encouraged us. And Lord, I pray now that you would anoint this time, that the word that is dispensed, Father God, will not return to you void. Accomplish that which you please. Prosper whereunto it is sent into our hearts. Therefore, we thank you in advance. And everyone in agreement said, Amen. Well, your 2018 is an amazing year. Amen? Last week, if you were not with us, we started and we said from Psalm 65, 11, that God's already determined the outcome of every year. That's this year. And that is that he will crown our year with his goodness and with paths that drip with abundance. So this year, just taking that verse right there that you see on the screen, is a year that God says, I have goodness for you, which is blessing and prosperity. That's the glory. And we say the glory? <laughs> yeah. Anyways, and, uh, and it says, and drips with abundance. And some of you say like, "Woo, I haven't found any abundance. I found a lot of lack, but I haven't found abundance. Well, it's there because God says it's there. The thing is to be led by the Spirit of God so that when we're led by the Spirit of God, versus the ways of this world, then we will find his path. And what I wanted to do is, at the beginning of this year, we started what's called a 40-day growth challenge, and it's entitled Your Kingdom Come. And we say, Your Kingdom Come. And all of you watching online can also join, because uh, later at the end of this service, you can find out how to download it, because this is a 40-day challenge for every person to become a part of. Not just some people. It's not for leaders only or for those who have been in church only. It's for the young person who just got started as well as, well, just every person, no one included. And, um, but everything we began with last week, being that it was first Sunday, was about making sure first things are first. There's something beautiful about uh, beginning of a new year because we naturally tend to go back to, an, to an, well, assess uh, maybe reevaluate, you know, how we've been doing life thus far. It's a good checkpoint. It's not the only one we should have, but it certainly is one that most people tend to engage on. They reevaluate certain things, and I won't go down the list of that. could be many. But Paul the Apostle did say, sorry, Solomon said, put first things first. He said, put first things first. Before you try to build anything, this is found in Proverbs 24 in a different version. It says, he said, put first things first. And, and that is the key on which we started last week. And, of course, Jesus came, and then he bring, brought greater clarity to us. He said, he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And as you can see here, everyone read that out loud. Ready? Read. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Now, the word righteousness is God's way of doing and being right. That's how, it, that's how it's read in this context, if you were to read it in the Amplified Version. Um, so here's what it's saying. It says, seek first the kingdom of God. So first, we should have focused the kingdom of God and His righteousness, which is God's way of doing and being right. Now, here is the creator of the universe... He is, the, he is the creator of all things, the one who possesses all power and all authority, the one who has preeminence over everything that is invisible and visible, and he tells us how to do life. See, this is order, and this is important. He gives us the counsel on how to live life so that we can get the best out of life, and he says... Seek first the kingdom of God, not second, not third. Now, from God's perspective, the creator of you and I, the creator of all things, he says, if you want to have balance and understand your rhythm in life, seek first the kingdom of God. First is the kingdom of God. And so here God puts and gives us insight on what should be priority for his creation. You see, priorities are what give life order. You don't have order without priorities. And without priority, there are no order. 
Right order determines right outcome. Wrong order determines wrong outcome, right? There is no order without priorities. It does not exist. If you say, like, ah, oh, you know what, I just, whatever, then you're a person that's completely out of order. You might have a lot of energy to yourself because you're younger, but you don't have any order. And um, order and priorities working together, because they basically work together, is what opens the door for greater capacity in your life. Without order and without priorities, you won't maximize your capacity because you'll be misfiring. And although what God says might not make sense or it's not the way you were, have been directed or been doing things, it's good to re reassess, examine, look at, evaluate what should be in order. See, when we do things God's way, then we have God's outcome. Otherwise, we try to do life our way, and we're not fulfilling our capacity. See, life capacity, the capacity of your life, the capturing of your potential, the living out of your maximum, you know, is found in order and priorities. And the first thing he says, keep me first, keep me first, and all these things will be added unto you. All these things you will not be without. Keep me first in my way of doing and being right, which is an adjustment. Someone said amen. amen. So the author of life just told us how to increase the capacity of our life. He said order is built out of priority. And order, as you've heard me say before, determines the outcome. When the outcome of your life isn't good, then you just have to take one step back you know, and begin to say, okay, what's the order? And what are my priorities? And it's a quick assessment. See, you know, it's not, uh, it's not leaving them out of your life picture. It's putting them right in the middle of your life picture. And um, so we started this 40-day growth challenge, which is doable for everyone here in this room. And it's about priorities. It's about what we read in the book of Revelation where the church and church members were doing all the wonderful things in one sense in society in the name of Christianity. But then God says, I have this one thing against you. You have left your first love. And he says, you need to repent, meaning change. Say change. You need to repent and go back to your first works when I was first in your life. He says, I know what you're doing I know you're showing up to services, and I know you're carrying a Bible, and I know you're, you know, occasionally using my name, and I know, and I know the good things you're doing. He says, but you're out of order because you've left your first love, and you need to go back to your first works. See, he's talking again in the book of Revelation, chapter 2, about order, but order that starts from the heart. ¿Me entienden? And so it's important for for us to understand it, priorities are what give life order. And it's important for you and I to understand. So the 40-day growth challenge that we gave it is, is about putting order in your life. It's not anything you, you, you virtually have to do outside of the life you have. It's about bringing center into your life, bringing biblical balance, bringing God into your life. You say, well, I'm not really there. Well, that's why it's there. And... You know, it's not like what takes 40 days takes 40 days. The biblical layout that we gave to you last week was 40 days. It doesn't happen in seven days. It doesn't happen in three days. It doesn't happen in one day. It doesn't happen in 20 days. It doesn't happen in, you know, you know 35 days. It's 40 days. Biblically, we saw how, how Jesus was empowered in 40 days. Elijah was transformed in 40 days. The disciples of Jesus were transformed in 40 days. You know, uh, prophets, Moses was transformed in 40 days. Noah was transformed in 40 days. 40 days. At the point of 40 days, it's that 40 days of doing something consistently with God. Then, boom, there's a whole new level that comes. And so the thing is to just simply say, I want to have a better life. I want 2018 to be better. Well, I'm, that's wonderful. But what are you doing to prepare? And, and this is where I'm helping you and, uh, and will help you. And, um, and as I go on, I think you'll begin to see. 
Everything, though, begins with your decision. Everything in this room. The power of your decision is so powerful that you undervalue your ability to do what God says you can do because you don't possibly estimate the power of your decision. See, everything begins with a decision. You are going to decide what is first, and you're going to decide what is second. You decided to come here this morning. That's the power of your decision. Your flesh might have wanted to speak to you. It probably was talking to you all the way here. But you got through the door. The power of your decision. Don't tell me you don't have power. We've seen that decision go the other way. But anyways, but I want you to understand. It's important that you and I understand that the first thing that you have to decide, as I said earlier in a, the different setting, let God be true. Say, I will, I will. let God be true. That's your decision, brother and sister. That's your decision, family. You have to let God be true. I mean, you're going to have to settle this thing on the inside of you. The only way, I'm talking about the only way you can live an explosive life, you know, I mean explosive life, is to settle it for yourself. I mean, be so dogged determined that you know God is going to show up regardless how other people voted you out in or however. You know what I mean? And it doesn't make a difference what the circumstances look like. See, the Bible says, and I want to repeat it for, for this teaching, that is, what if some do not believe in healing? What if some do not believe in salvation? What if some do not believe in the tithe? What if some do not believe in 40 days? What if some do not believe in the principles of the Bible? What if some do not believe? What are you going to do? See, this is why so many people, they get jacked up. That's Hebrew for messed up. Um, they, get, they get all upset because somebody that they know that, Thinks they're a Christian, says, well, I don't believe in the tithe, or I don't believe in this, or, I don't believe in healing, I don't believe in prosperity. Man, you know what? That person is a completely unsettled individual. They don't read the Bible. They would rather read someone else's lips. And I'm here to tell you, my friends, the Bible says, what if some do not believe and are without faith? You're going to find plenty of unbelieving believers in this world. I mean, they're notorious for not believing anything. They go to church, but they want to give themselves the glory. I don't want to tithe. This is my money. You're a thief. I'm settled that. Why I settled that? Because God already settled it. I'm just the milkman getting to deliver the milk. Come on, somebody. They said, you just called me. I didn't call. God called you out first. I'm just following his tracks. I'm just here to say. He says, what if some do not believe in are without faith? Is there a lack of faith? And they have lack of faith. There are people that lack faith for healing, lack faith for prosperity, lack faith for your great year, lack faith for you ever doing anything great. They say, ah, oh, you ain't going to do nothing. I grew up with you. Shoot, I know how you acted way back when. You know, you listen to that trash talk, they're going to keep you down all the time. You got to move yourself away from like, get out of my face. Don't need you. You know what I'm saying? No, you don't. But anyways, you'll learn. He says, what is it to not believe in or without faith? Is there a lack of faith? And their faithlessness. See, when you don't believe what God says, you are faithless. Don't tell me you have faith and say, I'm not a tither. Don't tell me you have faith I don't believe in healing. Don't tell me you have faith I don't believe in salvation. Don't tell me I don't have to forgive that person. Ooh, you're treading on territory with landmines on it. Everything's going to blow up. But we're going to try to keep it. See, the choice is yours. See, everybody always wants everybody to agree with them. You know, you're not happy unless this person agrees with you. This is why some people are so insecure because they want everybody to approve of them. Do you like how I'm, wet, you know, I'm dressed? And they say no, and then you get into depression. Oh, but I spent so much money. And they say, well, you look goofy. Who cares what they think? Who cares what they think? I'm wearing duck this morning, okay? That's just the way it is. <laughs> some of you are trying to figure it out. <laughs> what is that? The duck. Born again too. <laughs> Raw. Righteousness, authority, and wisdom. Just made that up. But it works for Pastor Art. He's not going to wear anything up here unspiritual. All right, sorry. But the power of your choice. For example, in 1 Corinthians 1, I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians 8, 9. I want you to read this as it goes up on the screen. It says, only be careful 
that the power of choice, it would say the power of choice. Notice, I want you to read it with me. Ready? Read. Only be careful that this power of choice, this permission and liberty to do as you please, which is yours, does not somehow become a hindrance, cause of stumbling to the weak. Think about that. The power of choice. The power of choice is yours. The power of choice. You and I make decisions, and decisions shape our destiny. And then when you compartmentalize God, meaning you come to church and you give him an hour and a half a week. I say this affectionately because I appreciate everyone being here, but let's just talk story here. You compartmentalize God. You come, you give an hour and a half a week, and you're a parent, and you go home, and you make no decisions that's God-based. Your, your kids are growing up watching the way you talk, the way you treat the wife, the way you treat situations, and they say there's no God factor. And so you get all disturbed because you stay connected to God, but you've always compartmentalized God. As soon as you walk out the door, you know there's no God factor in your life. You know? He, the, he's only factored in in the hour and a half that you give him, and Pastor, I better not go over. You know what I'm saying? But he goes over because I'm always testing your faith. And... Um, but the point I'm trying to share with you, they grow up. And because of the decisions they saw consistently in your life, they may not walk with God when they have their own choices to make because they never had the example of decision making with God when you were with them. Your children will be affected by your decisions. I'll prove this. Deuteronomy 30 verse 19 says, God says, I have, give, I have laid before you blessing and cursing. He says, life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, you choose life, it says, that you and your generations after you may live. Now, that's talking about how God says, okay, you have to choose. You're not a robot. You're not a puppet. I love you, but I want you to know that I love you, and, there's, and I love you, and I paid a price for you, but you still have to choose. And so here's, here's blessing and cursing. Here's life and death. Then he gives you the answer of the open book. He's, man, wouldn't you like to have go through school with an open book test? And the answer is right there. He says, choose life. I mean, if you can't get that, you can't get anything. All right? We're going to have to have some serious deliverance here. But I'm talking about, he opens the book and he says, choose life. This is the answer. Choose life. This is the answer. What is life? Seeking first the kingdom of God. Putting Jesus first. Putting God first. He says, choose life. Choose my ways. You'll be tempted with everything in this life. You will be. And all of us, come on, we all go through that. We all get tempted. We all see different things. But you have to choose. It's your decision that shapes a nation. It's your decision that shapes a family. It's your decision. You are not. See, the, the power of the choice is this. Is that no matter how you were born into this world, you can decide your way out of it. You don't have to live broke. You don't have to live poor. You don't have to live down. You don't have to live discouraged. You don't have to live downtrodden. You are nobody's rug to be walked on. You need to understand, ladies and gentlemen, the power of decision was not given by men. It was not given by organizations or committees. You know, they might do their thing and try to keep you out, but ultimately God wins when you make him first in your life. When you say, I'm going to let God be true in every man alive. So somebody might come up to you and say, well, you don't have a choice. I'm going to let God be true in every man alive. Because right here he says, he's given me the power of choice. Well, the devil might want to walk up on you in some way and throw sickness on you. Now you have a choice to make. You ought to say, I'm going to let God be true because his word says, by his stripes I am healed. Or you might open your bank book and it might look like, woo, it's like nothing in there. You, know, you got to declare, I'm going to let God be true and every man a liar because the Bible says he meets all of my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. There might be a day in your life that you're joyless. You got to say, I'm going to let God be true because the Bible says that the joy of the Lord is my strength. You might be a day where you've lost your peace because something happened. You're going to have to open up the Bible. He said, I'm going to let God be true because Jesus said in John 14, 27, in the Amplified Bible, it says right there, it says, my peace I have given you. My peace I have bequeathed to you. 
Not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. I like the way it says in the Amplified Bible. It says, stop getting agitated and disturbed. Agitated. I, you, no, they make me agitated. No, they don't make you agitated. You're allowing them. You're deciding that they have that kind of power over you. But they don't have that kind of power over you because you are not powerless. If you don't like what they're saying, then get away from them. Well, I don't want to. Then you're giving them the power. Oh, well, you didn't like that? Let me finish the verse. And the Amplified Bible says, stop allowing yourself to be agitated and disturbed. You know, if I had a line right now for all of you who are agitated and disturbed, you'd probably all, you'd probably all rush <laughs> the platform. Because there's all of us, just like you have power over worry, just like you have power over disease, or just like you have power over anxiety, just like you have, you have, you say, I do not have. Yes, you do have. See, the thing is this, you've been listening to the world, and that's the counsel you got, but God says, let God be true. There are doctors, there are scientists, there are people, and I say that to their credit, what they have achieved, but I'll say this, they won't see that your situation can be solved in the name of Jesus, but I'm going to let God be true, because there might be a day that somebody walks up to me or walks up to you and says, we don't have medical, um, a medical device to to take care of your situation. We don't have the capacity to get you out of You're going to die. And yet the Bible says, I will live and not die. And I want you to understand, the Bible says, let God be true. Either God is true or he's not. And it's in those moments that you're saying, let God be true and every man a liar. You're not going to go out and call people liars. What I'm simply saying, you're establishing where your conviction is. See, because when you let God be true, then he's true no matter what's going on around you. And there's going to be some stuff, baby. There's going to be some stuff that's going to happen in your life that you got to know that it's got to be greater who's in you than he that's in the world. And only when he's greater in you because of his word do you overcome those things around you. Come on, somebody. Help me out here. See, be, he says, be careful that the power of choice this permission, this liberty, who gave it to you? God gave it to you. God gave it to you. Now what you do with it, why he's asking you to be careful because your decisions can go either way. They can go for God or against God. They can go for sin or against sin. They can go for loving people or being unlovely to people. Then go for a bad attitude and just simply say, well, this is the way my grandfather was. This is when my father was. This is the way I'm going to be. Sweetheart, you married me. This is what you get. Woo! Jesus. Rapture him now. I mean. You know what I'm saying? And the thing is this. You and I are not powerless. And I'm not saying that every decision is, is that easy, but it is simple. I mean, if you want to get in shape and you're a certain size, um, it might be it, it, it's simple to do. It won't maybe be easy getting started, but it'll be well worth the price you pay. Oh, and I don't mean just to talk about that. I mean just in any of, of your life. See, your capacity is limited by your order and your priorities. And when you put God first, it's not religious it's not word of life only. That's why the 40-day challenge, my friends, is to help you understand what God can do in your life. You know, I will admit this. Sometimes it's hard getting started. Now, some of you went and you downloaded the, uh, the digital format that we had, or maybe you haven't picked it up, but we have a, we have a hard copy outside for any person that wants one today, we um, have it for you. We want you to be engaged. But you know you not getting engaged is not your time. It's not your job. It's not your kids. It's your decision. But most people don't want to say they, they have the power of decision. You know why? Because they don't want to be responsible for their life. And the thing is, you have to be responsible for it. The outcome of who you are and what you become is because of your decisions. You might want to blame mama and daddy. You might want to blame everyone around you. And they might have had some influences. Yes, I understand that. Who hasn't? But ultimately, you can believe your way, trust your way, faith your way out of a 
not so good situation into a much better situation. And the choice has been given to you. And those decisions are faith decisions. And so getting started is often, you know, probably one of the hardest parts of making changes in our life. Whether it's like a diet or whether it's something personal, like a personal growth plan, like 40 days, like 40 days, you know. Uh, you know, or, or breaking some health, unhealthy habit, whatever. You know, why is it so hard? The answer is because, and I shared this in a little video that I, I encourage um, some of those that have already engaged, and you can still get a hold of these. We'll tell you how in just a moment. Um, because we already have so many reasons why not to start in the back of our mind. That's why when 2018 rolled around, some people were really, a lot of, they were really excited that, hey, it's a new year, we're going to set new goals. Then a lot of other people, I'm just talking about people in general, not the church, but people in general, then like, oh, I don't know, that doesn't work. Well, of course it doesn't if you're not going to make a decision. M making a decision always works for you. Besides that, in fact, when you don't make a decision, you made a decision. Well, most people think that, no, no, I'm, I'm going to exempt myself from a decision. Well, you just made a decision. So you can't get away from ever making decisions. When you decide not to choose God, you've decided to choose, but you've chosen. You are never without the ability to choose. See, our goal in this 40-day challenge is to what, do what the Bible says, and we've had for over 30 years at Word Life, to promote your progress and your joy in believing. But you'll never see what's on the other side of the 40 days until you walk out those 40 days. Most people, they, they're like a doubting Thomas. I will not believe until I see. Well, you'll never see, therefore I guess you won't believe. See, the point is, most people say, show me first, and then I'll believe. But Jesus said, Thomas, why do you doubt me? And, uh, and I want you to understand that you and I can engage. And in the 40 days, I've already laid out who and how they were transformed. There's something biblical about that. And you can grow up your next level in Christ, your next level in your experience. You don't know what's on the other side. This is what I say. I've said it for years. I'll say it again. There's a blessing, a miracle on the other side of your obedience. Think about, you don't know on this side of taking your steps what's on the other side. Until you obey, you don't understand what's on the other side of your obedience. And it's so important for you and I to realize that our goal in this 40-day growth challenge is to promote your progress. I want to go up. Pastor Art wants to go up, you know, in all areas of my life. I want to be a better man. I want to be a better father. I want to be a better leader. I want to be a better pastor to you. I want to, like I said last week, I want to be a better citizen. I want to be better overall. I have goals. Nothing is automatic. Everything in life is a decision. Everything in life is a decision. And, uh, and so, and your joy in believing. But see, if you're ever going to move beyond just good intentions, and I, I want to speak to those of you who have good intentions. I mean, you really do intend to want to make some change, but you've been intending for how many years now? You know? So how do we get you from good intentions to those results? There comes a point in your life where you have to just stop thinking about what is good to do and start doing what is right to do. And um, doing something is moving you from good intentions toward the tangible reality of results. I'm here to tell you with the little bit of experience I've had in life. I haven't had it all and I don't know all. I'll never pro uh, promote myself that way. But I know that you can take the steps that will make the difference in your personal life, your family life. Come on, fathers. We need you. In your marriage life, in your church life, the power of decision is with you. And um, honestly, think about this. What good is a goal, a vision, a good intention, an idea, if all it's ever going to be is in the thinking stage? If, if all it's ever going to be is stuck in your mind, if all it's ever going to be is rehearsed at the coffee shop, you know, in other words, you're just in the talk stage, but you never, never act on it. A reason why so many people don't set new goals and they never get anywhere, it's not that they don't have the opportunity, not just in January, but any part of their life, is because they say they don't know where to start or 
And rarely does God ask you to take these, um, these leaps of faith that are so big that you've never done before. Remember, God is leading you. Remember, Isaiah 48, 17, he will teach you how to profit. He will lead you in the way in which you should go. He leads you to walk on paths that drip with abundance, one step at a time. He encourages us to take small, measurable steps that eventually grow into larger and larger faith steps. Let me give you three ideas before I close. Number one, I want to suggest these ideas. For example, in the 40-day challenge. In the 40-day challenge, we we lined out four things. We gave people a card like this, and if you don't have one, our sisters will be sure to give you one. But our digital guidebook or the hard copy we have outside is fills this out a little bit. Now, the guidebook is not a rule book, ladies and gentlemen. Don't get overwhelmed. It's Pastor Art, Pastor Davin, and Janelle just getting hyper, and we wrote a lot of stuff. Really good stuff, biblical. But it's a guidebook to guide you. It's not to direct you. But there are some very important principles. These are the four important principles. You have to make a decision. Without a decision, your life goes nowhere. The power of choice is yours. And you have to learn about decreeing. In that, the second part, as you read that guidebook, you'll find there's prayers that I've laid out straight out of the New Testament that you can say. That's praying the will of God over your life and over your family. For example, Psalms, Psalms 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver me from the stand of the fowler. And it goes on and goes on and goes on. But you can read that and you can speak that over your children. I've been speaking that over my children for years. I mean, when they were on the mountaintops and when they were in the valley. I've been speaking over that over my children for years. Because God is true. And every man is a liar. And I keep on saying what the word says, say. And then the third area is the area of developing. Developing is where I ask you to begin to develop your daily devotional. And then maybe weekly, one time a week, you can fast. And uh, not maybe you should. It would really, really build you up. And we'll show you how to do that. We have some links that will help you on this. And then... Once a month, like we just had this last week, we ask you to come to what's called corporate prayer, to whatever level you can come. And then if you can join a life group, boy, that'd just be taking it up. That's developing. You may be attending a life group, finding the, the power, the value of a life group. And I want you to realize, and then the last part is the, is the word dream. It would say decide, decide. decree, decree. Develop, develop, and dream. But the first steps are always you know, well, as I said, the first step is, is always a challenge. But only you can do it. Your first step is what I call the faith step. Because you're taking it in faith, not blind faith. You're not jumping, you know, in, into the dark. Let, let me give you an, uh, an understanding of this. Your first step is important. When there was a person in the Bible by the name of Joshua, and after he was with Moses, he was Moses' follower, then he began to lead because uh, Moses had died. And for 40 years, Moses had been going around the mountain. And God had promised the people, but their unbelief kept them out of the promised land. Finally, it got to this place where Joshua was told by God, it's time for you to cross over into the promised land. He got to the, the edge of the Jordan River. And the Jordan River wasn't, wasn't that big. It was like 100 feet across and maybe 20 feet deep. Except... When the rainy season came or rain came. Well, that particular time, um, the snows in the high cap mountains began to melt and the, the water began to rush down. It became very torrential, very dangerous. And it's in that moment where it almost looked impossible to cross that God says, cross over to the other side. Now imagine being able to see the promised land. You've walked for 40 years and now God's released you to go. And, and you have this obstacle in front of you. Well, the enemy's always going to put obstacles in front of you. No matter what he asks you to do, the enemy's always going to remind you that he's going to say an obstacle. You're not good enough. He's going to remind you you failed before. He's going to remind you you tried this before. He's going to remind you of this, remind you of that. Don't listen to your past. Keep your eyes on the word of God and your future. 
Amen? And so, and so um, nothing is impossible with God, and nothing is impossible with them that believe. And so here we have Joshua, and he was like, the only thing that separated them from experiencing the miracle that promised them was their first step. Their first step. Because your first step always goes before your second step. Whoa, Pastor Art, that is so deep. <laughs> I know, right? I thought of that myself. <laughs> and uh, what I'm trying to share with you is that Joshua faced a challenge. And maybe you're looking at the 40-day challenge as a barrier. Maybe you're looking at your job, you're looking at your family, you're looking at the things that you have going on, and you're saying, I don't know if I can do this. But you can do it. Because you know what? The choice is yours. You might have to make some adjustments. You can do it. You can decide. You, you, you can decree at your home. This is not even leaving your house. This is more about you on the inside than it is what you do on the outside. And this is about, number three, developing. You can do this. And we're here to help you, not here to throw you into the river, float down the Jordan. Um, but so all things are possible. The second thing is I'll agree with you that the first steps are always the hardest steps. You know, what do you do when you know that something is God's will, but you're challenged to do it? You do it anyway, is what I like to say. Do it anyway. When you know it's God's will. See, God's will is God's word. God's promises is where you'll always find his power. So maybe you're afraid. Maybe you're intimidated. Maybe you say, oh, I don't think I, I, I have it within me to do. But you're already trying to measure it before you've taken your first step. Why do you determine the outcome before you've even tried to walk the walk of faith? See, we walk by faith, not by sight. God is there to help you. But you know when you see his power? It's not when you, you can say all day long, show me first, God, show me first, show me first, God, show me first. He says he, he's not obligated to. The moment you take step one is where you feel his presence, where you know he's with you. And maybe you start in your daily devotionals. And maybe you, 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 you know, you, you, maybe you attempted fasting. And, and we're going to help you to do this correctly. And, uh, or maybe you've gone to a life group. Uh, or you've been thinking about it. Well, we have some things that we're going to help you. But the, the first step, I said uh, you have to take the first step. Second thing is the first steps are always the hardest. And um, you can start small. There's nothing wrong in small steps. Taking a small step is the best step. You, you can overwhelm a person. I know in this church that we have different level of believers. Um, and it's, that's what makes our church exciting. You, you now, you have people who have been here for a season, some people who have just started, you know, gotten into the Bible and are learning and growing and want and to grow. And that's exciting. But we're all at different levels. We're not all one mark is everyone's same level. So, for example, I have in there under decrees seven different types of prayers. It's like, whoo! That's a little overwhelming for me. Well, maybe you do one a day. But the thing is, when you speak God's word over your life, your family changes and you change. You do that for 40 days, you will not be the same person. You say, well, how can you promise me that? I don't promise you that. God's word promises you that. Because God watches over his word. When you say what he says about you, his power comes on you, your family, and everything about you. Amen? Amen. You know, and some people say, well, I'm just going to wait, 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 wait. Well, no, no, don't. The Bible says this in Ecclesiastes 11.4. If you wait for perfect conditions, you'll never get anything done. There's so many people who say, like, one of these days, I'm going to, one of these days, I'm going to, one of these days, you're going to what? <laughs> you know? And, and, and here's the beauty of it. Um, you, you don't understand what's on the other side. I can't do it again. I had a testimony for you. I'm going to have to hold off till next week because we're going to have communion in just a second. Um, let me close off with the, with, the, with the third thing. The first thing is take the first step. The second thing is, yes, first steps may be hard, but hard is not impossible. Hard for a person might just be doing this. Hard might be just opening. I've never done devotionals. I'm going to open my Bible. Hard might be I'm going to decree. I've never done that before. I understand we're at different levels. But I'm here to tell you, commit to 40 days, your decision. 
Watch what God does. Watch how you have a lot of people to support you and help you. And, and why is because of the, the third thing. Dream big. This 40-day growth challenge is about God's dream for you. Of what he wants to do in your life. Did you know that when the New Testament began, God began to talk to his people about visions and dreams. God has a vision for your life. Young man, young woman, young couple, whoever you might be. Senior, whoever you might be. God has visions and dreams for us. He has much for us to do. As long as there's breath in your lungs, God has something that you can do that gives him glory and helps humanity. And I want you to know about that. Never forget that although you take small steps on this 40-day growth challenge, there is always a big dream before you. For example, many, many years ago, I was minding my own business. I was a little bit on the flustered side. I was in architecture, graduated. My mother supported me going to USC, University of Southern California, the greatest school known to mankind. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. No, no UCLA fans are going to speak up because I have the mic. Anyways, uh, no, all schools are great. And, um, and so after graduating and going through all of that, getting my degree and starting work, you know, I was here in Hawaii, um, and God spoke to me in Kuna about starting something, starting a, a church. And I, I did it the right way. I went to my pastor and so forth and so on. And he had a vision. He showed me that it was God's will. I said, like, whoa. But I felt so inadequate. I felt incapable. I felt unprepared. You know, I felt I didn't have this, didn't have that. I loved God. and I was serving God. And, um, but I felt unqualified and unprepared. My mind was filled with doubt and questions and honestly, a little bit of fear. You know, and I thought to myself, you know, who am I? I'm not a Bible scholar. I don't know anybody here. But it's just, and you know where it all started? What you see today, this is one of four services today and of other campuses. But this is what it all started. It all started with one step. Because until you take one step, God can't show you the next step. And that's why I'm simply saying, if you'll commit to 40 days and make a covenant, say, God, I, I just need your help. He'll help you. He's not embarrassed of us. He, he loves us. I mean, if God can pick me up from the miry clay, come on, somebody. I mean, you all, you all got leaps ahead of me. Amen what I'm saying? And, and what I'm simply saying to you that, you know, the dream of Word of Life began because Pastor Art and Pastor Kuna were willing to one day take one step. It wasn't always pretty and it wasn't always nice, but it was one step. And it's one step of faith. One step of we're taking a step but we're keeping our eyes on him. That's all this 40 days of growth is all about. It's all about encouraging you and promoting your progress and your joy in believing. Did you receive that this morning? Did you receive that? Amen. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to really embrace you and encourage you. I know many of you have not yet started uh, the 40-day challenge. You know when the 40-day challenge starts? When you begin. How's that? So you can start today. And um, really simple things to do, you know, and I'll talk to you a little bit more about it. <clears throat> we have much to share about your kingdom come. But I do want you to, to receive with me uh, for the first time in 2018 communion together. The ushers and, and everyone as quickly as you possibly can. Put on your PF flyers. Put on your Nikes. I guess if you have to wear Adidas, you can. Um, and pass out the, 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 um, the elements. Some of us in this room may have never received communion before. But I want to say that um, to receive communion and to not be born again uh, does you no good. There is no, it's nothing then for you a religious thing. Communion is for believers. Now every person is welcome to become a believer but communion is just nothing but a ritual, routine, that's nothing more than maybe religious. And, but that's not what communion is all about. Communion, done right, will heal your body, give you long life, and strengthen everything about your being. It's very powerful. 
And I'll prove that to you in just a second. But before I do, just in case there's some people here in this room, I said, Pastor Robert, I'm not sure whether I'm born again. I'd like to make sure that, that heaven is my home and that Christ lives in my heart. If that's you, I'm just going to have you be where you're at. I'm going to have you pray with me. It's your, the sincerity of your prayer that makes the prayer genuine. And so if you'll pray with me as everyone else prays, and you, you mean it with all your heart, you might have questions. But I will pray so that you receive Christ in your heart. It's not my words as much as the sincerity of your heart. So say this after me. Say, Heavenly Father, I come before you this morning, and I ask you to forgive me as I repent of all my past. Sins, transgressions, wrongdoings. I believe that Jesus Christ was born of a virgin, died on the cross for my sins, and rose again on the third day so that I could become part of your family, a heavenly family. Only you have the power to change my heart. You sent your son to love me unconditionally with his mercy. So right now, I declare that Jesus Christ is the Son of God who has forgiveness for me. Father, change my heart. Send now your Holy Spirit to live inside me. I receive Jesus as my Savior, as my Lord. And now, by faith, in the name of Jesus, I am a part of the family of God. Heaven is my home. I now have eternal life with the Son of God, Jesus Christ. Father, this I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Give the Lord a great big hand clap. Welcome, Jonathan. Is a few closing thoughts. Come on, how many are grateful for the blood of Jesus? Awesome, awesome. Well, church family, before we dismiss here, we, we do want to take advantage of what Pastor Art shared about in today's service about decision and taking that first step. And we want to help everybody regarding this 40-day growth challenge. And so um, we have a card that we would like to give you if you have not received it yet. It's a card regarding our 40-day challenge. It, it gives details on how to access uh, the digital guide that we have made available to all. Uh, but just to let you know, there are four different ways that we can get, get, uh, gain access to this digital guide. Uh, the first uh, way to gain access to it is to text. If you have a smartphone, you can text to this number that's 44. 222, it's going up on the screen, it's not the taxi company, uh, but it's, it's 44222, text to that number, your kingdom come, all one word, and then it's going to ask you for your email, because throughout this 40-day challenge, we want to be involved in your lives, and our pastors, uh, they're going to be sending out uh, updates throughout the week just to help you uh, regarding this challenge, because God is going to do some amazing things uh, throughout these 40 days. The other way that you can gain access to it is through our mobile app. You go on our mobile app uh, on your smart device and it's right there on the front page again it's going to ask you for your email the other way as well is to go on our uh, website wordoflifehawaii.com uh, you can get it right there download it to your phone download it to your computer and if you do not have a smart device access to a, a, a computer or anything like that don't worry we we have um hard copies just for you right outside in our courtyard all you have to do is register we'll help you get registered and we'll get you a hard copy as well but we're going to be taking our first step if it's your if today is the day you start your challenge it's about taking that first step no matter where we are and we're going to grow and see transformation in these 40 days can i get an amen and that goes for all those joining us live stream online. You can gain access to this guidebook as well. Uh, but church family, with that, we want to uh, say to you, go in the blessings and the peace of Almighty God. Shalom and God bless you. Thank you.